Uh, this is going to be the first video from the um, October um, 11th remote class. Um, only going to be, I think, about three of these, and largely what we're trying to accomplish today is get you comfortable with, with a few new tools, um, in particular this one called Zonal Statistics, but also use this as an opportunity to move to a bit higher level of a scale than we've worked in the past. Um, you know, in the last few weeks with Raster, we've remained largely at a neighborhood or a city or a site level. And that will definitely continue in the following few weeks as we focus a lot on surface analytics. But Raster can often be used and, and also used really to, to classify much broader um, landscapes. And so in the instance that we're going to focus on today, you know, what I, I brought in for this first demonstration is a series of rasters about the um, conservation importance of certain uh, animal habitats, right? Whereas a zero means this uh, habitat would have, you know, not kind of limited conservation value for rare species of a given um, animal type, and a 10 would mean it has significant value. So we can see kind of that for birds, for fish and for um, mammals at the bottom. And these are much larger, right? They're covering kind of like a multi-county area in southeast Pennsylvania. And if I were to look at the, the properties of them to sort of understand how they were created um, and everything, you would see that one, these are projected in meters, right? So my, my, my units are now in meters right now is how this kind of came from. And so therefore, the raster, when I click on it, is 30 by 30. So it's 30 meters you know, by 30 meters. So given our conversation the other day in class, is roughly 100 feet by 100 feet. So you know, about the size we were operating with Lancaster, and that makes sense because we're looking at kind of a broader area here. But now we're looking at a lot of pixels over a given place. And so one of the first kind of tools I want to use here is we're looking at these sort of three individual layers here. And we might want to bring them together in such a way that we're no longer just looking at like the conservation of birds alone or fish alone um, or mammals alone, but so that we're kind of analyzing all three together and maybe trying to call out areas where there is significant conservation value across all three species, right? Like where all of them would be 10 or all of them, um, you know, would be nine or, or all of them would be something else. And you would do that with something that's called cell statistics, which is what we're going to learn. And to give you an idea of what cell statistics is, let's zoom in. Cell statistics is, is a local tool that would literally, you know, I'm going to use this pixel as an example, but you would extrapolate what I'm about to say to every pixel we're looking at, where that pixel would do a calculation for the bird layer, for the fish layer, and for the underlying mammalian layer of either reporting the maximum value it found, the average value, the median value, the sum of all values, um, and then that would duplicate itself for every single pixel. So right, it's one of these local tools where each pixel doesn't really know what's going on around it, but it knows what's going on quote unquote below it, right? It knows what's going on with the other rasters in its area. So cell, cell statistics, um, right, anytime I'm going to do raster, I'm just going to start uh, by setting a, a processing extent, um, you know, to maybe the, um, the birds, and then the, the raster cell size is also going to be the birds. Remember, like in class, once you're done with these, it's always good to, um, you know, let these go so you don't accidentally switch geographies and, and, and have your tools not work. So, cell statistics will be in, in tools, spatial analyst. And it'll be under local. Definitely one of the great tools, um, you know, once you sort of figure out and, and get comfortable using it. So cell statistics is going to look somewhat similar to, um, to emerge or uh, an intersect in that it wants multiple things. And so that's what I'll do at first, right? I'll drag in bird and then below bird I'll drag in fish and then below fish I'll drag in mammalian. So I'm looking at sort of all three conservation values. Now it should be said that when you're doing cell statistics, even if the raster values are ordinal or nominal like they are here, right? These are ordinal, whereas it's not like, you know, 10 is any kind of real number like feet 
or um, you know meters or home sale price or whatever it's certainly on a scale where something that's a 10 has greater value in conservation than something that is is a one um, and all three of these kind of operate on that same ordinal scale zero to ten representing conservation value so I'm saying that because you don't really want to bring in like you wouldn't do a cell statistic of distance to a thing and then density of a thing because they're two different kind of metrics and measurements you really want to compare like measurements so you bring them together and maybe the first thing I'll say is like you know max conserve and the question I'd be answering here I'll call it max conserve is by picking my statistic maximum I'd be saying bring back the max value you happen to find so if something came back with a 10 it might you know be a one really not that important to conserve the bird habitat and it might be a one for fish but it might be a 10 for mammalian right it's agnostic about where it comes from but it does look at all three and come back and say like look I looked at all of them and the maximum value I can find so this can be really good actually in filtering out areas that might be less important right if I look at all three of these and my maximum value is a one that means that in none of these areas about conservation am I that important of a habitat um, you know versus if I'm a 10 I may be very important for you know at least one thing um, or another thing so we'll run it it might take a quick second because the you know the cell statistics are um, a little bit smaller given given the overall area here uh, ArcGIS, there you go, continues its long legacy of picking, you know, stupid output symbologies. Uh, we should likely try to classify this up so it has greater similarity to um, what we just looked at, right? That kind of green to red conservation threshold. And there we go, sort of, it doesn't look like any of the others, but what it does is it's used each one so we can kind of see that, like, ah, oh, yeah, we love ourselves down here in Philly, but we're not really significant, you know, for anything. If I click on us, our value is going to be zero, right? Our maximum conserve, meaning of all three of these, we are a zero. There's no significant areas, you know, versus something like here, um, you know, up in Wissahickon, for example, has a maximum of nine, meaning that in one of those areas, it was very, very important to sort of conserve, right? So we changed the landscape a little bit. And cell statistics, right, you can do sort of all kinds of, of, of things. You can emulate what we've done in the past with raster calculator too, you know, but to an easier degree. So what if I take cell statistics and I'm gonna drag in the three again, you know, fish conserve, um, you know, mammalian conserve and, and bird. I don't have two birds. That's not. That's unfortunate. Where's my second one? Oh, it's down there at the bottom. And bird conserve. And you know maybe this one I'll say, um, you know, an average. And, and so now what I would be doing is looking at all three and bringing back kind of the average. So if it's a nine or a ten, it's only going to be a nine or a ten if all three of them. Um, have the absolute maximum sort of conservation value versus it's only going to be a one, right, if all three of them um, aren't really kind of necessary. And then it's a five if there's sort of a balance, right? So it's a different question. I'm no longer saying this is an area with sensitive mammalian habitat or sensitive bird habitat or sensitive fish habitat. I'm now saying this is an area with all three of those having sensitive habitats or an area where on average all three of them don't. And there we go again, ArcGIS being itself getting confused because I've done an average, right, and it's going to pick uh, a scale. And, you know, the reason should be obvious because I'm now having numbers like, you know, 1.1 or, or, or 2.2. And so anytime there's intervals like that, it scales itself. Um, but I could still come back down and, and I could, you know, take the stretch and I could pick the green or the, the you know, the, the green to red and then say stretch yourself between your minimum and maximum value to assure the bottom's a green and the top is a red. And there we go, sort of like a different story. You know, there's fewer areas when I look at all three of them together where I happen to have sort of an overall, um, you know, kind of high average, right? I can look right in this area and I'll get a value of 8.6, right? That might be the highest that I'm getting, an area where, you know, maybe one of my values was a 7 and then the other was a 9 and, and a 9. So that's cell statistics, right? It looks at every single cell individually against all the other cells and other layers and performs some calculation.